Welcome to another episode of Engineered for Everywhere Audio, brought to you by Memphis Audio. I'm your host, Mark Sarge Schleifer, and on this episode, we're going to venture up to the New England states, up to Maine, to see one of our sales reps, Chad Boone, who did an awesome installation on one of our kits in his personal Polaris Razor Pro XP. Stay tuned and be sure to check it out. Hello everyone, I am Chad Boone and I am the sales manager for the New England Territory for Memphis Audio. And today we are going through an installation of a RZR Pro Pack 4P into a 2020 Razor Pro. This kit does 2020 and up, two-seater and four-seaters. This is the non-ride command version, so it does adapt the SMC3 into the center of the dash with the included bracket. Let's break apart the RZR Pro Pack 4P kit. As I mentioned before, it does run the SMC3 for a head unit with the factory looking bracket. It is then ran to the MX400.4 amplifier for the front and rear speakers and does come with the bracket to mount it as well. The front speakers are a 65 FE. These mount behind the factory grill and then the tweet does mount into the A pillar. They are RGB lit cones and have the RGB lighting that fires down onto the floor panel as well. The rears are a 62 PS, which are RGB lit as well. The sub is an RZR Pro 10 SE, 350 watt sub, 700 watts peak. The system's gonna have right around 800 watts to get loud. The wiring harness kits, these are plug and play as mentioned before. They are pre-terminated, so you have power, ground, and ignition. Let's get this thing wired up. Please take a look at the list of tools needed for this installation to make sure that you have all the proper tools needed to successfully install your Memphis Audio Power Sports kit. All right, we start this by pulling the trim panels on the dash, these lift straight up, clip straight in. Both sides, this one goes around the glove box and then right above the headlights. That one, all, they all clip on. And then there is a total of nine T40s across the dash there. And then this front panel is pops off as well. And then there's two more underneath it. After we remove a total of 11 T40s, we're going ahead and taking these four T25s out as well so that it comes out a little bit easier without the glove box attached to it. Once we got the 11 T40s out, went in and took the four T25s out from underneath the glove box to separate the bottom tray. And then the rest of this now pops up and straight out on this dash piece. Once we have all the dash off, then our next step is to pull the T240s on each side for the speaker grills. Once the grills are removed, I then go up to the A pillar and they have inserts that pop out from the back. And that is where your component tweeter will then mount. All right, the pod and the tweet are installed. Got the two T30s holding the speaker in in the front, and then the T25s. Go back and mount it to the panel in underneath. I'm bringing the wires up right behind the tweet to keep them out of the way of all the other wires. Driver's side, same way. Mount back there. Tweet wires. Still ran up the same. And passenger and driver side both. It is a lot easier if you back that screw out and then put it back in after you get the kick pod put in. To run the wires to the rear of the vehicle, you can take the passenger side eight 40 millimeters bolts out. Pull off the rear of the center console there take the mid-center console loose. Then you have to pull both rear seats, 
the bottom seat plate out, the lower back and the upper back. To get the middle out, you do have to take the seats and the bottom plate under the seats out first. The rear towers are mounted and wired up. All wiring is ran down through the center console and tied up. The correct order we're going back together now is the mid console, the rear seat plate and the rear seats, the lower back and then the upper back. For subwoofer install, it does come with two metal fasteners that you will slide in on each side where the bottom is going to mount. When you put the subwoofer in, set it on the floorboard flat and go up into the dash with the top first and it will go up into place much easier. Once the bottom bolts are in, the top bolts have the metal clamp that clamps around the bar. One thing while you are pulling that subwoofer up, make sure to pull the wiring up as well so you're not fighting getting that up through there. The one thing I am going to do is cut this bracket right here and right up through this as that subwoofer box does hit it, making it a little tighter on the battery connections. Next, we move on to the amp mounting plate. We screw the mounts to the amp plate with four screws, and then the amp screws to the plate with four screws. And then that whole amp bracket mounts onto the steering bar with four bolts as well, located directly in front of the instrument cluster. Now on to the head unit installation. You will need to cut along here and around this piece here to have access for the back of the radio to come through there. The four bolts right here, them are the mounting bolts for the mounting plate for the radio, which is right there. Then on the front side of that is the beauty plate. And on it, I have drilled the four holes from the back side where the stereo mounts. Once you're ready to mount it, you put the radio in the hole, line these holes up with the holes in the bracket, and that screws all together. To run the power and ground for the amp, the subwoofer, and the head unit, the side panel needs to be removed or pulled back. There is two push tabs that do have to get removed, along with the 10 millimeter bolts holding the fuse panel. Well, then there is six T40s along the bottom there's a t40 right underneath the shifter setting this snaps up allowing this panel to come off far enough to then run the wiring down there in front of the battery
On this one, we installed a rear backup camera. It goes into the factory location. You can get this from Memphis or from most car audio shops. And then on the SMC3, it does have a camera button right here, which will turn on your rear view camera screen. The wires for that are ran right down the center console along with the rear speaker wires. Well, thank you, Chad. And that was definitely an awesome install. And I've actually been able to listen to this machine when I was up in the New England States. And let me tell you something, this machine really, really sounds good. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank Chad Boone for doing the installation on his personal machine. It definitely sounds great. Definitely a killer installation. What a great job. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Again, I'm your host, Mark Sard Schleifer. Be sure to check us out at memphiscaraudio.com and also check us out on all of our social media platforms and be sure to like us on those platforms. And again, thank you. Have fun out there, safe riding. And until next time, have yourself a great day and happy trails out there to you.